Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Welcome to another community call Research Hub. And first order of the day, we have an exciting demo from Jeffrey and Ricardo on Discord and DWORK. Yeah, thanks, Anton. Um, so uh, Ricardo and I have been hard at work kind of setting up um, the Discord server, which is going to house a lot of the working groups. So the working groups is going to be how we're going to be able to leverage the community, which we have an awesome community that really wants to help. And I know a lot of you have been kind of DMing and asking how you can help. So I'll do a run through of the Discord page. Uh, and then we want to make sure that the people that are bringing value to Research Hub um, are also getting rewarded with value via Research Coin. And so that's what Ricardo will discuss with the DWORK page, which will be a system of bounties where the people in the working group can set up ideas, execute the tasks of those ideas, and then get paid out and DWORK through uh, Research Coin. So let me go ahead and share screen. <clears throat> So let me know if everyone can see this. Everyone can see this, yeah? Looking good. Yep. OK, cool. Um, OK, great. So here's the Research Hub uh, Discord page. And so um, we're, we're about 90% of the way there in terms of like setting all the permissions and the logistics for everything. So um, you might be able to like start rolling people in there and, and fine tune that stuff along the way. But in theory, how it's all going to play out is uh, as a new member, when you do when you do enter the page, all you'll see is this verification channel here, and everything else will be uh, non-existent, won't be viewable. Uh, then you come in here, and we have a research hub bot that um, you just go and you click your check mark. When you click the check mark, you get verified, and all the other uh, pages open up to you. Okay, so we have things such as um, FAQ. Uh, which again, we can adjust and flush out a little bit more, uh, some important links to some of the important uh, platforms that we use, uh, as well as uh, some big announcements. Um, for example, this new feature of the DOIs that came out. So these will all pop up here. Um, and then one thing, a little thing I do want to mention is um, we can also set up events. So for example, this weekly community call, there's a couple Twitter spaces um, that like the overall DSI community has been setting up. So we can have these as, as kind of like quick and easy events to attend. Um, and we can also even set up our own events um, kind of within Discord as well. So it's got a lot of customizability and functionality. Um, so just some generic like text channels. So a general chat, uh, we can kind of house some of the governance proposals um, here as well to discuss um, RIP3 in the future, um, you know, you have to have the memes and uh, some some tweets and things like that. So these are just kind of generic, um, like uh, text channels that everyone can communicate on. But uh, kind of the crux of the whole reason we uh, are using Discord is it's very easy to set up a system of uh, like roles uh, and then have those roles be able to access certain things. So for example, say you're uh, you know an editor or a community member and you are wanting to get involved into a working group, you'll come in here, you'll come to the introduce myself, and you'll type in a little spiel about yourself, um, like your name, your background, um, what working group you'd like to be directed to. Um, and this one, um, still we're figuring out a little logistics, uh, but it could be a link to the research hub profile. Uh, we would just want to make sure that the proper Discord user is also going to be like, because people don't go by their real names sometimes, they have usernames. And so we want to make sure that that username is associated with the right Research Hub profile. <clears throat> so you'll go and you'll introduce yourself. Uh, then one of the admins uh, will be either any of the working group leads or any of the community leads will come in here and they'll say, hey, um, you know, awesome. We'll go ahead and get Satvik over uh, to some of these working groups. So. As a user, you'll be able to just view all of the activity going on in these, but you won't be able to input until you get um, kind of verified. Then um, what we could do on our end is um, we can uh, not do it from here, but so we'll go server settings and then we'll go into uh, member. 
And what I can do is I'll go ahead and uh, give somebody that role. So for example, say, um, say we'll, we'll banish community, Ricardo from community lead and we'll say, hey, you introduced yourself in the introduce yourself section, boom, you're a working group member now. And now Ricardo will be able to enter any of the working groups. So we have open source dev, we have treasury management, we have marketing and outreach, and we have events. And you'll be able to get involved. Each of these um, working groups will house a working group lead. Um, and they'll help facilitate a lot of the discussion. And, you know, once you come up with some ideas and tasks to do as a team, then uh, you can segue over into D work. The working group lead or the community lead can set up a bounty for you and you can complete the task to earn a reward. So before we segue over to that, um, which Ricardo will go over, I also just wanted to quickly mention uh, a little something for the editors. The editors have brought up a couple of, um, you know, like they're inquiring a little bit about how they can get a little bit of support or ask for time off. So what we did was we, um, you're using a ticket tool bot where you can actually go here and you can create a ticket uh, for any um, issues you're having. So if you have something that's unresolved, you can create a ticket. And then if you have, uh, and you want to submit for any time off, you can submit a ticket for some time off. and. Um, uh, we'll be working really closely with Lynn um, because she's the editor liaison now. So I'll work really closely with her on uh, getting her on board this and how to go through some of the support ticket stuff. Um, so that can be helpful for the editors on that front. Um, so I guess before I pass it over to um, before I pass it over to Ricardo, does does anyone have any like questions about it or like even really actually any feedback because there's going to be some like logistical things we still need to iron out. Um, and so we're really happy to hear from the community about how we can streamline this. So this is like a small thing, but just from the, the D work bounties that we've done so far, um, I, I think D work is intended to, to do a lot of payments on chain, but we're slightly different in that we're paying out within the app. Um, how do you suggest that we encourage people to tie like their D work, you know, bounty claims to like an actual research hub profile? I actually like reached out to a couple people on Twitter who were just kind of random, you know, who who completed bounties and they like signed up to research hub and then I sent them, you know, bounties. But I guess I guess in the instructions we should just tell people that they need to like add their research hub profile to the bounties that they complete. Yeah, actually, I, I just was talking with Ricardo like. 10 minutes before this and we said that that was probably the most ideal solution at least in the short term but like maybe it's not like mega scalable if we had thousands of people but it will be when you go and submit your final task for about the d work you can add in the little section my research hub profile a link to the profile so you know exactly where to pay somebody out um yeah so we're, we're trying to figure out there, there's a way actually another way we were thinking about it was through Discord, you actually wouldn't even be able to make a Discord account on Research Hub until you linked it to your Research Hub account through the platform. Um, and I've seen some projects that do this. So that way your Discord role will be associated with your Research Hub account. And then your Discord role, um, you can actually log in to Dwork with your Discord role and everything transfers over. So a couple, couple of routes we could go about this. With. Yeah, I love that second one. That's awesome. It, if you have to sign up to even participate, I think that's a, a great way to do it. Yeah, it'll require probably a little bit more work. So we'd have to discuss maybe with like, um, I don't know, someone's a little more savvy. Totally, yeah. Okay. Um, well, yeah, so I, I think we'll give the Discord like a big push once it's like, you know, it's almost there. Um, and then uh, maybe I'd transfer over to Ricardo and he can talk a little bit about D-Work uh, and how that fits into everything. Yep, absolutely. Um, let, me, let me share my screen. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. 
Okay, so um, let's say you're on Discord, you got verified, and you now, you know, you, you join your, your, the working group that you, that you wanted to join and contribute to. So as you can see, you will find on the work uh, the same kind of division. So you'll still have marketing, treasury, uh, OS, and, and so on. So what do you do? Let's say you want to contribute with, uh, with some content creation. So you go on the specific section under marketing and outreach. You go on here and you will find a list of um, bounties to complete on the left, on the to-do section. So let's say you want to do uh, an async AMA on Research Hub with a manuscript author. Um, you open the task and you see some, some details. Like for example, you will see that the, the reward is going to be uh, 3000 RC. The is obviously to do. And there's always going to be a reviewer uh, from the community that is going to basically review the work that you, that you do to complete the bounty. Then what we have here is the, the task points. The task points should ideally reflect the kind of like the um, amount of work that you are expected to, to put in for a specific bounty. This is in the, we still have to iron this out, but ideally this is what the, the task points are going to reflect in the, in the future. Um, and basically what happens is, is uh, you can uh, apply to the task. You can put in like a tentative date. Let's say I will start tomorrow and I, expect to finish in like let's say 10 days and you put a message so as jeffrey was saying how do you identify what is the who's who's the the research shop profile that is actually completing this task because you're going to have a username here and a username on research shop uh, you can either put it in here okay a message like i am uh i'm no ricardo this is my profile and i would like to do this task because i think it's a great opportunity and so on you confirm you put in i'm interested and Basically, someone from the, the community, um, the, from, from like, for example, the city reviewer can take your, uh, your bounty and once it's approved, put it in progress. And let's say you complete your task, you finish the, 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 the AMA, and that is put into in review. This is another place where you can put a message. So this is where basically uh, Jeffrey was also suggesting we could put a message like, I'm Ricardo, this is my profile. So either at the beginning, or at the end, once it's about to get reviewed. And yeah, once it's reviewed, it, the, the, the bounty will go into the done section and the payout will be done directly on, uh, on Research Hub onto your account. And um, uh, what else? Yeah, I, that's, that's pretty much it. You have a section here divided by the different, um, yeah, the different sections. And here you can see the most recent tasks. So you can see the, the, the most recent activity on the, on the platform. So um, yeah, same as for, for Discord. If you have any, any question, please uh, feel free to, to share now. I'd also like to add, um, so like the, the research coin that's listed here, like for like the bounty, um, actually had uh, James like set up um, a research coin on the uh, Ethereum Rinkeby testnet. So the research coin over here is just kind of like a placeholder to just say, hey, so we could actually list how much research coin. It's not going to be, and there won't be research coin paid out on chain to you. So it would have to go through your research hub uh, plat uh, app or your research hub account on the platform. Um, so for those of you who are like familiar with like using things on chain, this won't actually be ERC20 research coin going into your wallet. It will it will be re real research coin, but from the platform, and then you can move it from the platform into your wallet if you want. Yeah, thank you, Jeffrey, for yeah for putting that up. Okay, well, uh, if there's no questions, well, that's that was it, and. Hope to see some many more contributions soon. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you guys so much for setting this up. Even just having a Discord, I think, is going to make it like a lot more professional in a in a Web three sense and help us like I think capture like even I saw D work retweeted us today and like almost is like trying to help re us recruit like bounty completers. So yeah, I think having the Discord set up is going to help us capture some of the like non scientist native people who want to contribute. So thank you guys. And then if anybody has any bounty ideas, um, feel free to like ping uh, Ricardo, Jeffrey, or me. Cause I think like 
the more creative we get with these, the better off we'll be. So yeah, just any ideas, feel free to let them fly and we'll try and make, it ha or make them happen. Oh yeah, on that note, Patrick, there's, um, I I'm not sure if DWork has adjusted this since I saw it, but there's a community suggestion uh, segment. So there's actually a segment on DWork where you can even, re you can ac actually say, hey, I think that this should become a task. Uh, and you can type it all out yourself, the description, how much research coin you think it should be worth. Uh, and then it just one of the leads would approve it and then it becomes a real task so even if you if you guys are like no i don't even want to talk to like jeff or ricardo or patrick then um you could just go ahead and do it on the platform itself so just in case anybody's watching just to walk through that flow if you have any ideas community suggestions up here and you can like write out a whole bounty and then it'll go to the community leads and we can check mark it and uh, put it into circulation is there any way to incentivize suggesting bounties? Like, can you put a bounty for creating creative bounties? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm sure we could do something where maybe like, uh, if we accept any of them, just like a flat fee, 25 RC or something to say, thank you. Um, yeah, we could totally do something like that. All right, thanks guys for the excellent demo. Looking forward to using the work much more commonly. I often encounter users in, in Slack who want to do a little bit more, but not, you know, not as a full-time job, not even as a half-time job, but kind of like casually here and there. And I think the work is really excellent for this use case. So I guess before we move on, uh, I think Anton brought up a pretty important point here about like the, the size of the bounties. Um, so, so it's, difficult now because there's not like a super reliable like dollar value equivalent i think once we have that it'll be easier to kind of like project how many hours each task should take and then like put the appropriate bounty on it so i think like yeah trying to figure out the right um like balance of bounties is going to be sort of challenging until we get there but i but i guess uh jeff and ricardo do you guys have any thoughts on like um Kind of like the rewards on research hub versus the dwork bounties i guess like one piece of like to preface that before uh jeff and ricardo answer is like if people are willing to kind of at least in my perspective willing to dive into the project enough to like complete kind of like extracurricular tasks to me it's okay if they're kind of heavily rewarded at the beginning because you kind of deserve it for like putting in the effort at like a early stage so, so from my perspective, I think it's okay if the dwork bounties are maybe like a little heavier until there's, you know, significant liquidity and people be able to cash out quickly. Um, what do you guys think? I second that. Um, I think that it's in a lot of crypto projects in general. You have this like idea of like early users being whitelisted for a project, um, and I would think that like the early community members now should be considered, they should they could consider themselves as being whitelisted for the project. And, you know, maybe there will be some higher like payouts for certain tasks. And I think that's normal because you need to get rewarded for being really early um, into a project. But um, that being said, if so, like we're super open to making this really malleable and adjusting it based off of how everyone else seems like deems something fit. So if you feel like, Hey, these these payouts are like too much for some of these tasks we can always like kind of adjust things along the way um because it's going to be a little bit of like logistical trial and errors too so just as long as the community just gives us a lot of feedback we'll we'll change whatever you guys uh think is good yeah actually like just adding something else on top of what uh, jeffrey said we were um already thinking about standardizing like kind of like standardizing the, the amount of like uh rsc paid out based on like priority of tasks and the amount of work that you're also supposed to do uh for that task so that is also open to, to suggestions so we were kind of like already creating like a sort of like a classification based again on priority and uh the say difficulty of the task so we can uh pretty much openly uh share that with you guys and uh yeah getting getting your thoughts on that Lynn? um yeah so my main thing is just uh as we were just talking about liquidity like i do think that a lot of people especially if they're not editors who do this will probably want to cash out um sooner rather than later and also um like 
we do have to, you know, again, with liquidity, plenty of um, editors also want to be able to cash out at least in part um, at some point. So we have to keep in mind, like our editors as well, who want to, you know, be paid for their months of work. I think people will get annoyed if like all of a sudden people who haven't been a part of the program are able to like log on, get and cash out like, you know, 3000 coins, that kind of thing. But I think if there's enough liquidity, people will care less about the bounties being larger and that will also attract more people. I love this idea of this bounty board thing. And, and I think this thing with like authors, et cetera, I think this is a really good idea, but I still think liquidity is one of our biggest problems just overall. Yeah, totally. And, and so kind of like a couple pieces of context there, like I just looked at uh, near swap this morning just to, to get a, like a sense of um, how that is turning out and liquidity is actually increasing. Like, I think um, just looking at it now, the volume over the last 24 hours is a thousand bucks, which is, you know, not bad. And so I think like, if you like want to cash out like 150 bucks or something like that for doing a bounty, I think Uniswap kind of supports that. Like at this moment, you know, not, not everyone at the same time, but it looks like people are kind of doing that right now. Um, so that's important. Um, another piece of this too is like, um, over the weekend, like uh, Reddit's co-founder actually tweeted about Research Hub and like um, was kind of like helping to increase awareness of investors who might be interested in helping out with the project. So I think that once there is more liquidity, there will be buy side demand, you know, to, to help like, uh, you know, I, I guess let people get out of research coin if they want to who have been earning it so yeah absolutely fairly confident there um so i, I think you know I've been saying this but i think it's just a matter of time and it looks like things are kind of starting to come together a little bit oh i, I definitely agree like i i pay it you know i've been checking every once in a while the price of research coin i've been noticing transactions you know of, of transactions of like 150 bucks if you said or as you've said around that i've noticed like a lot of people making transactions it doesn't look like people are repeatedly making transactions based on the addresses I've seen, you know, withdrawing. Um, so, you know, I've no, you know, I've just been paying attention to what people have been doing, how the liquidity has been going, all of that um, on like Aether scan, whichever the one is that shows, you know, the prep, you know, I think that's the one, but yeah, I was just thinking that I think once we have even more, it'll just be the best way to, you know, get people involved. And we know that there are people who want to buy research coin, you know, people have been asking about it a lot, in fact, and people who want to earn it. So I do think it'll be something people want. Yeah, totally. Uh, Edwin? I wasn't putting my hand up. I was touching my hair. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Should we move on to the next topic then? Sounds good to me. All right. So the, a little bit context here. If you remember last week, uh, we have talked about changing the reward structure a little bit. And so now uh, much more from the upvotes and the, the REC tips to the papers comes to actually to the offers of the papers as opposed to the submitters and, uh, and such. And so that leads us to a situation that a lot of papers are going to start accumulating the significant amounts of REC. And so the time is perhaps ripe for us to consider the automatic and manual solutions to reaching out to the offers of the papers that are particularly popular on research hub. We can kind of start it as a low scale experiment in a manual fashion. Curious to hear what you all think, you know, how popular should the paper be on research hub? How many upvotes? How many tips should it be before we contact the offer? What do we say? What do we want from them? That kind of thing. Yeah. And so um, th this was mentioned during the editor call last week. And, and basically people said like, hey, when I upload a paper, like it'd be cool if there was a button that says like, you know, bring the author here. And it would be not like easy, but we could automate essentially checking for the corresponding author and then sending an email um, saying, hey, you know, your paper has been uploaded to Research Hub. People want to talk to you about it. Like, come check it out if you're interested. Um, here's some coins waiting for you. Um, so there's a lot of different like, kind of variables in what this feature could look like. Just thinking like off the top of my head, either it could be a button that happens as soon as you upload a paper, or maybe it happens after five upvotes or maybe five comments. So trying to distinguish like, when do we reach out to the author? Like when the post is most compelling for them to come in. Um, so that's like one variable. Another variable is 
should the email come from someone's personal email address? Like, it should it say, hey, like, Anton Labed wants you to come talk about this paper? Or should it be like the Research Hub community wants you to come talk about this paper with a researchhub.com like, like automated email? Um, so yeah, I'm not sure which one would be better. Uh, we can try out a bunch of different things. And then also like the, the copy of the email, like exactly, you know, the value prop that we're giving to these authors when we reach out to them. So there's, I, I think that this is kind of a genius idea. Like it's a great way to get into people's inboxes with something like compelling on two fronts. One, like social validation, like scientists want to talk to you about your paper. That's super cool, right? And then like also maybe like here's a couple bucks if you come over and like claim like this interest, you know, in your paper. So yeah, the, the cool part about this is we can test this all out manually um, and then build what works. So yeah, like, you know, in a perfect like world, how would you guys like to see, like, I, I guess like the three variables in my mind are when do we contact the author? You know, is there some kind of minimum activity we need to contact them? Does the email come from an official address or does it come from like a more like personal type of touch? What's more compelling for the author? And then the third is like, what's, what's the communicated message? And so we can try a bunch of different things and actually maybe like science to see what does work the best. But yeah, curious what everybody's thoughts are. Like I said. So I actually have something to say this time. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, what, why do you think the personal email will make, will be so much better than the automatic email that gets generated when you put their uh, email you know, when you put their name and say they have to claim the RSC, I don't understand the logic behind that assumption. So I'm not sure. I like, I'm not 100% sure that a personal email would be better. Um, my thought is uh, just from academia.edu, like they have a pretty bad reputation because they send a lot of like emails out and they come from the academia.edu email. I know personally, like I get mildly infuriated whenever a company tries to take my attention for free with spam. And so, yeah. like, I, like it's me personally. I would like it better if, like, Edwin said, "Hey, Joyce, your paper is cool. I want to talk to you about it," rather than a company. And especially if we do it in a way where you're pressing the button, it's not like Research Hub is automatically reaching out to people. It's like there is an individual who wants to talk to the author. Having having that like personal. I just don't like spam and like, I have a big aversion to it. Um, but that's, it, it might not be the case. That's just my own personal feelings. No, no I know. I totally agree. I think that makes sense. One thing that might be cool is if um, the people voted, if there's like a voting threshold for whether the author should be contacted and people actually like put a bounty for that. So it's like, oh, the people are discussing your paper and they voted instead of just like an individual wants to talk to you about your work, but it's more, um, you know, people have been reading your work, think it's really great, they have some questions for you about it. Um, and it's not, um, well, I don't know, that, that's just a thought. Um, because I think there's, um, if we're setting up infrastructure where um, the only way to get the person on the site to talk about their, their work is, you know, some of us crafting a personalized email uh, to them. I don't know, I'm, I'm a little uh, skeptical that that's like a possibly long-term solution. Maybe it's something though that can bootstrap it, that can just, you know, get the idea of Research Hub acceptable to a lot of people. So I don't know, but just something to think about. I'm sorry. That makes sense. Link, do you want to add, add something? Yeah, I, I have, um, you know, an, uh, a comment on like each of Patrick's things. So like for the when do we contact, my opinion, I, I mean, I don't know if it would be worth, it, it's tough to say, you know, what, what, what's the draw, right? Is the draw just that a lot of people are talking about the paper? Because if so, then yeah, it should go based on like comments or upvotes. Or is it like, once this author has like at least X amount of RSC, you know, we think they'll be interested enough to, 
drop by you know what i mean if it's just like you have like six coins is that going to be enough or are we assuming that like the discussion is enough so i guess that's where i'm kind of like unsure there because if we're thinking it's coin motivated we should you know decide on like a minimum amount but if we think it's discussion motivated um you know people with not a lot of time on their hands might not be like just willing to like go join us just for a discussion was my thought on that um mm. So I, I would think that we'd want the author to have accumulated a certain amount of RSC, not necessarily associated with one paper, and just be like, hey, like, there's been some buzz about you on Research Hub, like, you know, et cetera, like, your paper, the paper's been talked about. I also think in terms of the email, um, whether we do personal emails or not, and this kind of compounds with, like, the what is the message, I think at least a part of the message should be uniform or at least contain a link to just kind of explain briefly what Research Hub is, what our mission is, and what Research Coin is, because not everyone's familiar with crypto, not that many people are familiar with us, and I do think we want some sort of, again, like, brand consistency, you know, not just having people shoot out random emails that are completely random, um, but I do agree that we don't want it to look too spammy. So I don't know if that want, just that should be like a link to a page. But I think all of that is important things to consider. Yeah, those are great points. Um, I, I think like the feature would eventually, when it's automated, it, it, like the copy would be uh, standardized. So it, it would, I, I love the idea of saying like, hey, here's the five people who have uploaded your paper. And then their profiles maybe are added to the email saying these people are interested, like they want to learn more. Um, but yeah, it would, I think we would eventually want to like do experiments here to figure out like what needs to be automated to where it could just be one button where it's like, hey, this paper you uploaded got five upvotes. Do you want to send the email an author? And it's a notification that popped up. Well, um, I also, that's so another thing. Sorry to interrupt. Just sorry, real quick, just because you made me think of something I also meant, meant to mention. We also could have different ways of contacting authors who are already on Research Hub versus authors who haven't been here before, because that's also you know, there could be a difference there. Um, one thing I wanted to emphasize just to you know, think about, I think there's a difference if you get a notification saying like, oh, people are upvoting your paper on this website versus people have put money aside so that you can talk about what you did in your paper. And that's why I was talking about the idea of like, you know, if there's actual, like a, like a bounty that people on Research Hub, like, you know, how we tip people, right? We put aside some money um, specifically so that the author can have a conversation uh, about their work. And then in the email that they get, it's, hey, people are actually have, like, put money aside for you to claim so you can talk about your paper. I think that might be more interesting to them just than just, oh, your paper is getting all these upvotes on this website that's crypto-related, which... You know, a lot of people think it's sketchy to begin with, so. Well, I, I don't know, think, think that's almost, that almost fits into what I was saying, where, like, if everybody yeah. wants someone to show, they donate RSC to that author. Once they hit a yeah. certain point, then they get contacted. I think it could work either way. It could either just be through general buzz, like, there's so much discussion about their papers that they hit that amount, or, like, people want them. So, like, we could get a group of editors together. If I was like, hey, like, I really like, like, somebody posts a paper, a bunch of people are talking about it. Like, yeah, we could all get together and be like, hey, like, let's each throw 250 RSC to hit their thousand, you know what I mean? So, yeah, like, again, I think that, you know, Edwin and I, it sounds like we agree that, like, an RSC threshold is better than just, like, a few comments and upvotes. So, do you guys think, Edwin raised a really good question. What is the perception of the tipping, right? Do we tip to invite a person to hang out with us? Do we tip because we think their labor is valuable and we just want them a to... cool guy. Right? But like when you tip in real life, do you want to hang out more with the person you're tipping or...? So the, the one, I think one piece of context here too is that we're, we're adding like a new way to distribute research coin where like uh, each upvote in theory is associated with a lot more research coin. It's not just one upvote per research coin where the grand majority of that extra research coin goes to the author, like 75%. So, so kind of like upvoting is tipping in a way, you know, to a certain degree, like it will like drastically increase the amount of research coin that's waiting for the author. And I think you're right, like, once it hits a threshold where it's like, hey, this is actually worth your attention, um, that's a pretty cool way to go about it. Um, 
not one. Yeah, I, I still think it's probably worth testing. Like, are coins more compelling than five interested people? You know, because I, I think probably different researchers will respond differently to both of those kind of offerings. But yeah, I, I think you're right that RSC threshold is better than upvotes or comments if we want to automate it like that. Do you think it would be valuable to add kind of a, a, an estimate of corresponding value in, in, dollar, in dollar equivalent? Right? Because people might not know what crypto is, what REC is. So it'd be like yeah. 30 bucks as of today. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there should just be instructions, like, you know, this is how you check the product, like, literally, like, oh, you know, like, somebody could put together a page or together, like, something that would tell people everything they need to know, like, this is what RSD is, like, click here to, like, see the price, et cetera, and, like, you know, we can even link crypto resources, you know, we obviously can't sit there and educate everybody on what crypto is, but we could at least maybe link some obvious, you know, resources to them be as helpful as we can to these people that we're trying to get on board. Liquidity would be huge here though, because if you could say like, Hey, you know, here's 50 bucks, you know, your graduate assistant is not going to turn that down. So. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm not, not too convinced about uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of the, the RSC, you know, like specifying that there is some RSC there for you. I'm not the biggest fan of like emphasizing too much the, the monetary value, because if crypto itself seems sketchy, crypto plus money is even worse. So I, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't emphasize that too much. Like we're bringing in here, you just like the money. We're bringing in here, like bringing you here because a lot of people discuss your paper and there's a lot of interest around this paper and then there's also you know some rsc sitting there for you but i i wouldn't switch places honestly but you know it's it's up to discussion yeah well that's just a matter of how you craft the email right yeah that's just like how you craft the email we can you know you can balance that you yeah, know, this seems like part different. of the experiment too, where we, we can try sure. two different sets of copies where one value prop is, hey, people are talking about your paper, come talk to them, there's a little bit of coins. And then the second one can be like, hey, there's a bunch of coins, like come get these coins, talk to people, because they're these I think five that's people. that's a good idea to test yeah. it, yeah. Like, you yeah. Know. Makes sense to me. Topic for your question here. I think we want people who have written papers that our community wants to talk about. Like, I, I don't necessarily, I mean, it would be great if they were all influencers that had a million followers, you know, and they wanted to tweet out about us too. But I think like the goal here is to like create cool conversations about the papers. And so we should, we should reach out to people like um, the paper that's on the, the uh, homepage right now about like body image and like weightlifters. There's a lot of cool conversation right now. And so like, I think after this call, I'm just going to reach out to the author, just, you know, shoot out an email just to test it, you know, because it, it's pretty cool if you show up to a page of your paper and there's like extensive conversation going on. Like, I don't know, I, I would find that very compelling if someone reached out to me about that. Definitely. All right, just looking at the time here, we have a few of the other items we want to discuss today. Are there any final thoughts on the matter? Patrick will experiment, but I'm guessing maybe we will move forward by creating a few bounties so that people can start drafting those emails and uh, send in to offers of different uh, papers and research up. Yeah, and if, if anybody wants to help me here, I, I've had like pretty good success with cold emails. So like, uh, like I can definitely read this, but would love to work with somebody who wants to kind of like, like take the lead and make sure that it goes through and I can like kind of share what's worked for me in the past. And uh, yeah, I think, I think like I've gotten response rates of like 25 to like 50% asking people to do AMA. So I think it'll be like a pretty solid return. Nathan? I, yeah, sorry, just final quick thoughts. I think just going back to write, 
uh, especially when it's a smaller project and we've got a smaller number of people to go through. I think what Patrick was saying about getting a personalized email, it's going to be a lot more effective, in my opinion, than getting an automatic email. Even as someone who's published a few papers, I, I'm spammed with with emails from random journals I've never heard of, conferences I've never heard of, sites, you know, the biggest being ResearchGate and other smaller ones, just telling me that people are talking about my paper, seeing my paper, reading my paper, and, and I just delete basically all of them um, because there's not too much to go through. That's a completely different story to someone actually reaching out who's read it with some personalized insights from the paper and asking me my thoughts on it and with a link that I can actually see the discussion on. I think another thing to think about is what are we asking from these people? Are we asking them to respond to some comments? Are we maybe, if we think they're interested, asking them to do an AMA for us? Are we, you know, increasing the rewards if they're willing to invest some more time? How much of that? Are, are we reaching out to them as an initial introduction to then speak to the editor in their section to see how, how much they'd like to be involved in the project and, you know, how much they're willing to contribute if, if papers they've authored are, are being discussed? These, these are just things we can talk about and, and I'd be very happy to help with, uh, with that, um, Patrick. Nice. Uh, Nick, that's a great idea. When I send stuff out, I'll CC uh, the editor of whatever hub it's in just to like, you know, help to keep everybody in the loop. That's a very often awesome suggestion. And then um, Safik just messaged me too. So so maybe we can do a call at some point to, to figure out how to best coordinate um, getting this started. I didn't, did you want to add something or is your hand up from the, from before? Maybe it's a letter. Anyway, so Lynn is now in charge of the is, is the editor liaison, and she will be reaching out to you regularly with the service and such. And now would be the moment for her to describe what she has in mind for us. Yeah. So um, I created an editor email list. I haven't sent out an email yet, but I plan to shortly after this meeting. And I wanted to give first everyone a heads up because if you don't get an email, um, I want to know. Um, like people should get an email soon. And in fact. Patrick, do you want me to share the survey just so everyone can take a look at it here and then like, you know, show people what I'm going to be sending out, what they should expect? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Quickly go over. Can I share the screen? How does that work? At the I bottom, think... there's a little like arrow present now, like a little computer screen. Um, oh, the hang yep, up button. yep, yep. Um, a tab present. Uh, where do I have that? Oh, I should probably open it first, right? That would help. Um, So this is the plan. Um, can everybody see this RH editor three month survey thing or no? Yep. Okay. Yes. So this is what's going to go out to people. Um, it's been three months now since the editor program has kicked off. At the stage, we're pleased with how the program has begun to develop to ensure continued growth within the program. Both in terms of scope and efficiency, I wanted to gather some information in a brief survey to gauge how our editors are feeling this far. Um, this question, the questions asked are based on questions I've been hearing from both editors and the ARCH community at large. Participation in the survey is both voluntary and anonymous. However, we're going to award 100 RSC to uh, five random editors to, to complete the survey. So basically, the goal here is to get feedback um, from the editors about how they're feeling, both to help us and to help um, you know us, the community, and us as uh, the editors. So if anybody has any questions about um, what we plan to ask or the answers, let me know. It's seven really quick questions. Um, how active would you say you are on uh, Slack? I just see I have a little typo here that I will fix in between here. It should be not active at all. Um, if you're currently not active on Slack, please indicate why, and you can check all that apply, including um, an other. How can we make Slack more accessible slash encourage use, um, optional free response? Um, as this program is still in its nascent state, the role of the editor is still developing. Certain details about the position may be more or less clear to others. How comfortable do you feel in your role as an editor, i.e. understanding what is expected of you, the types of posts and comments that are ex expected and encouraged, proper representation of the RH brand, um, uncomfortable and unsure to comfortable and sure, um, how comfortable are you with the current editor uh, productivity expectations, um, it's expect more from the editors, it's satisfactory balance um, for both the site and for the editors, um, I think I used the wrong form of site here. Another thing I'm going to fix. Um, it's too heavy a workload for me as an editor. 
Um, again, this would be totally anonymous. How clear are you on what constitutes a meaningful contribution? And are there any other questions or concerns um, about the editor program you would like me to know so I can address it with RH? And that's another optional free response. Hey, Lynn, okay. I think it's great. Can you scroll up like a couple, a little yep. bit? I want to feedback. Yep. Um, yeah, for that one, for the how comfortable are you with the current editor productivity expectations? I would yep. maybe have a, a free text field on that just because okay. I feel like people will want to say know. things. I'll get some notes up because I have to fix my typos. That looks anyway. good. Okay. Um, yeah, I will add that. Uh, Satvik said that question two should be optional. Question two should be optional. Can do. Uh, yes. Question two optional. Uh, if it's anonymous, how are you going to figure out who are the editors who you're going to raffle? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to include another link. That's a good question. So there'll be a link to a separate survey where you just enter the email you use as an editor. Um, and I'll explain that in the email. So we'll know that you completed the survey. We just won't know which responses are yours. So we'll get an, you know, we'll know who did it, but we won't, you know, won't be linked to your responses. So that's how we'll do the raffle. And then literally at random, we'll just pick five. I'll probably just like sort randomly in Excel and the people who come out on the first five will probably get it. You know, I'll assign a random number one to 10,000 and then sort by that column and the top five win. Um, that's how I always do raffles. <laughs> So um, anyone else want to see any other questions? Does anyone want anything added? Anything else made optional? Um, I thought about making them all optional, but if you're agreeing to do the survey, I assume you're willing to give us at least some information. We've got to collect something from you, but I'm totally cool with like making number two optional, but is there anything else that should be optional? Anything without a star is, so like this is optional and this is optional. And I'll add the text box, the optional response here. Or wait, was it here? It was how comfortable are you? This one. Yeah, I'll add the optional response here. Do you have anything in mind for frequency of this survey? Maybe tied to the end of the month call or something? Or is, is it just for editors? Yeah, it is just for editors. So I was going to present my findings at the next um, RH lead call, like the bi-weekly meeting. Um, I, I can present, you know, I can discuss it wherever people want me to, but I figured we'll want to give it like another at least week and a half anyway to let people's responses roll in. Like I'll make the changes as soon as this call hangs up and I'll send it out and I assume, you know, people will get it. And then I'll send an email into the editor Slack just to let people know they can look for it. And then if for some reason you don't get it, um, you can contact me because it, it should, you know, I, I'm pretty sure everybody should be on the list now. And I got an email, so Sotvik said, not sure if anonymity is important to editors. It's, it isn't to me, and it seems like an extra step. What do people think? Do people think this needs to be anonymous? Um, I did it out of courtesy, um, you know, as the extra step. I think it makes sense to start anonymous, just even with the workload question. You right, know, right. Yeah. That's, a, that's a big one. But we can, we can, you know, adjust for the next one. If yeah, it okay. If it's needed. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that for people to be totally comfortable and honest, anonymity might be important. Yeah, did you mention that you're going to tie it into the end of month call? I mean, in, in which case then there's going to be a public uh, opportunity for people to discuss it openly. With yeah, we can do that. That can be yeah, done with the people want me to do it. Um, you know, I'm here to help you guys. So I'm, you know, however people want. Yeah, so if you have, once the results are in, then you can also publicly present the results and then people can discuss it as they feel free and wish to. Yeah, that sounds great. The way that anonymous surveys have been done. Yep, makes sense to me. Edwin, you have a hand? Well, this is awesome. Thank you so much for putting it together. I'm yeah, no problem. To the results are. Yeah, keep an eye out for it. Should be coming soon. Thanks, Leon. That's excellent. All right, a few uh, minutes left, and which we should discuss two topics: a pur purpose and perception of upvotes, downvotes. I think that's tied a little bit and related to the meaning of the tip that was relevant earlier. Like, what what action do you Thing that upvote and downvote represent. I personally have never downvoted anyone. It, it, it just feels, I don't know, 
are you proposing that this kind of content should be more frequent on the website? Are you just agreeing with the person? Would you uphold the person you disagree with, but you think that they have a point? I haven't uh, downloaded in like weeks. The only time I downloaded was early on where some of the posts were just like, did not belong on the site at all, but I haven't seen that in like a while. Yeah. Nathan? Personally, I mean, this might be a controversial opinion, but I don't really see what the purpose of the downvote is. If an upvote is tied to some kind of research coin reward, I get that. Is the downvote, going, downvote now going to subtract from that? It, it, it seems kind of strange to me. I mean, the purpose of the downvote, if, if someone doesn't like the content, then they can comment about that. If someone doesn't like the rigorous methodology in the, co in, the, in the paper, they can either comment on that or they can report it like to the editor. Do you, do you know what I mean? As, as like, this is not science, what we're looking at here. I don't know what, what the downvote, other, it, it, apart from those two functions, really serves, um, other than, you know, in certain algorithms on the back end. That can be my only. Yeah. It, it's a really interesting point because there's almost like this um, philosophical debate going on in like reddit style forums where like downvotes don't actually mean anything like if you look at hacker news is a pretty good like technical forum they don't have downvotes um so yeah we we're just copying reddit to get started with and reddit has downvotes but but even like like it would be interesting to see the back end of reddit like i bet people just downvote stuff they disagree with like it's you know it's like this personally makes me angry so i'm gonna downvote it and like that's not really what we're going for either so at least in my mind, I think that the downvote can be replaced by our peer review feature where like in theory, you know, if there's a highly upvoted paper, but it's reviewed poorly, like there's a lot of context there. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great question, Nathan. I don't know if downvotes actually do mean anything, but we're just copying Reddit to get started with. Ricardo? Yeah, the only time that I downloaded a paper uh, was because it was like pretty bad, like like poorly written. Uh, the methodology was not not just like not rigorous, but, but like unclear. Like some some chemicals used were not even labeled, so something like that. It was just difficult to understand the paper itself. So I could have, as you said, like uh, written a, a comment saying this paper looks like pretty bad, but I just like downloaded that because it was yeah, just didn't want it to see it. <laughs> Kobe, interesting to hear your perspective. Yeah, um, I'm not a huge fan of the downvote because, uh, yeah, I just, I don't think, like, I think, like, if you have, if we had, like, a proper flagging system, then people can just flag, like, content that's, like, inappropriate. Um, that combined with the, like, some other action can be achieved what we want. I think at the moment it's like subjective. So what does an upvote mean? What does a downvote mean? Who knows? It means it means something to most people and people take action. But I think one of the, the reason why I wanted us to discuss it also is because I noticed that people are just like not upvoting often. And I think it has to do with the fact that people don't quite understand what an upvote, what, what does it mean to upvote? And that's um, was the beginning of it, of uh, the discussion. So what one thing I saw that um, there's another website, I don't know if you heard of it, uh, maybe you guys did, uh, but it's called Flash Pub. And what they do is they just have one action called endorse, which when I was looking at their website, it actually like resonated quite well with me because I was like, yeah, upvote and downvote don't really mean something, but endorse is like a word that implies something. And I think like in uh, science where there's a lot of uh, reputation and credibility, it could be like uh, something something like that can be good. Uh, so. That would also go great with the previously suggested my idea. My question is if we were to replace it with something like- Yeah, endorse, so you remember how like, in previous week uh, people suggested that you should be able to view who upvoted you? I think that both, uh, yeah. that is much better fitting for endorsement, right? With endorsement, you're staking your personal reputation in a way. You're saying, here's my stamp of approval on whatever is this content. 
Yes, I like that a lot <laughs> personally. Um, so like also does, so I guess like do people like that? And also do people actually like the down vote? Like, and if so, like why do you like it? One hesitation I have with the endorse idea, actually, like I love the concept behind it, but it's a lot of work, you know, like to, to read a paper and say like, hey, I endorse this. Right. Like, that's it's like yeah that, that's a lot like i definitely would not upvote nearly as much like i would have to read the whole paper and like actually dig mm -hmm. into the methods and stuff to be like yeah i endorse these people's work so that's a that's little a good bit point. scary to me is like a just a cognitive barrier um which could hurt our weekly active contributors but i think like the end stage that's the right idea you know once we have a bunch of people on the platform already and maybe there's some kind of like expertise weighted mm -hmm. ranking to it I wonder then it, if this maybe... is a donation. Sorry. Oh, um, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say uh, one final thing. Like, I, I agree, Joe Patrick, that, yeah, it's like a, a bit weird. Now, like going back to uh, Stack Overflow, I'm just going to say one thing real quick. When you hover over the upvote state, they actually tell you what it means to upvote. In their sense, they say, like, when you upvote, you, you imply that this is a good question. Uh, that uh, has meaningful, I don't know, like uh, in the technical realm or something like that. So maybe we could, um, I'm thinking like maybe, we, like let's say we kill down vote, only keep up vote, don't say endorse and introduce like uh, in hover state where you hover over it. We tell you like, oh, by upvoting, we accelerate science. Like you, you think that this is contributing to science or something like that. Maybe this is the wrong perspective, but I almost feel like it's like I'm interested in this. Like I don't want to read it, you know. Like, but I want to upload it so maybe somebody else will, and you know, leave a comment and tell me if it's worthwhile. Like, like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm hooked, but I don't want to read it. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that's a, a feeling. No, that's interesting. Very interesting. yeah. Waffa. I was just typing my comments in the uh, discussion, but I will just give my um, comments real quickly. I actually like the downvote, especially in the discussion, because sometimes you want to downvote uh, comments that are irrelevant to just make the focus more on comments that are relative and comments that you think would encourage the conversation. So I personally love the downvote. I think it's necessary. I do agree with the points that made that is not of significant when it's for the papers themselves, uh, because you can just write a comment or you can upvote it. But for the discussion, I think it's very important and I actually like it and used it a lot. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. That's a great point, Walter. Jennifer? Jennifer? Um, I, I'm not sure if this is accurate, but I've always thought the upvotes and downvotes had an impact on what showed up as trending. And that was just the assumption that I made. And so I wasn't sure if we could get some clarification on if they are utilized for anything algorithmically or if it's really just the upvote gives you RSE. Yep, they're, they're used in the hot score. So, so it does increase the visibility of a paper when you upvote it. Um, comments increase the visibility even more and we plan to tie like even more additional research coin to upvotes so so upvotes will basically like outside of what they feel like what they actually do on the website is increase visibility and like significantly increase the rewards for the submitter and the author of the paper and so then um, downvotes would make them rank lower as well yeah, pretty much. It would, it would, I think right now you actually lose one RSC if you downvote, like the submitter loses one RSC. I don't think it would be like this in the, the V2 reward algorithm, but it does decrease the visibility. Okay. In that case, I would say that it's something that has some value to keep, as Waffle was saying. Lynn? So I actually had a question about how comments appear on paper. So like, 
the more upvoted comments, like comment threads appear at the top, right? But within comment threads, do things get boost, like bumped around? Because I've had trouble, it might be my imagination, but I feel like I've had trouble following the thread of how certain conclusions were reached when like information gets mixed up from its original order, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know. I, I, I've, I'm, I'm not sure what the best way to structure comments is, but I at least feel like I've had to like hunt around a couple of times to exactly figure out how the thread got to where it is. Cause maybe like the first, you know, the thing that actually like started it is now towards the bottom instead of at the top. Um, it's not always the case. And I'm not sure do common threads like within like so if like one comment spawned a bunch of like threads beneath it like what happens within those threads like do things get changed around or is it only like the first thing that everything's linked to yeah it's uh, i'm not sure <laughs> honestly i think i think uh, i have to look into it we our comments feature is due for like uh, a little bit of a refresh but i think it's based on the newest content but i could be wrong it should the, the you used to have this discussion it used to be just by number of uploads which made it super inconsistent and hard yeah to it looks better than i'm going through it now and it definitely looks like a, a more a more like more like the the structure that i was hoping it would be because before it doesn't look like anything like supersedes a level that it shouldn't based solely on upvotes but i feel like that yeah. used to happen but it looks like everything makes sense how the, it is the first level comments i think the ones that start threads they are sorted by popularity right okay yeah and then that, within, that's fine yeah and then within okay, them cool. they're chronological right that makes the most okay cool cool all right nathan yeah, I, I just wanted to make a point on the um, tying of upvotes to research coin. Um, if I mean, I'm just following up on what Patrick was saying as well, that if, if upvoting is seen as sort of a less committal, um, you know, I like this paper, but I'm not really quite sure what to say about it. I'm hoping someone else discusses it. Then it seems to me like a lot more weight should be put in terms of the reward to the author on comments and in particular meaningful comments. And then if you're looking as at trying to reward engagement and driving engagement to the site I, I feel like comments should really be encouraged over upvotes and, and therefore maybe tying encouraging the author to drive comments or submitter uh, more more you know accurately to drive comments to their article I think should be rewarded more highly than than simply upvoting um you know if, having 10 meaningful comments on your paper I think to me is worth a lot more than 30 random upvotes It's a great point, Nathan. I like that a lot when you like tie the incentives of the submitter to basically like generate discussion around it. Cause then it's like, oh, why not share it to Reddit? You know, why not share it on Twitter? Get more people in here saying like cool things about the paper. It's a it's a really interesting point. And then I even think like once we have like a peer review score, that that's another important metric to add in there. Cause if you share a paper that's highly upvoted, but it's like poorly, you know, peer reviewed, like like yeah, I think our reward algorithm is gonna be constantly changing and always taking in like new inputs and so this like v2 it's it, i think it's a big improvement on the v1 but it's definitely still bad and like we'll need to you know the v3 will definitely have like comments and peer reviews in it and like already thinking about how we can improve it is is better because i think uh yeah it's it's just going to change like every three months forever i think is probably how it's going to work Malik? Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, I agree with Nathan about, you know, like that uh, comments should be, uh, you know, considered way more important than just uh, upvotes. Like I have a couple papers right now where there is a little bit discussion going on and one where there was like significantly like important scientific questions raised. There were long comments and stuff and that's nowhere in the visibility versus there was another paper. It was in nature that has been like upvoted. Um, so yeah, I agree with that. But I also had another question and uh, it might be a dumb question, but I don't know. So if somebody supports a paper with RSC, does that lead to like certain number of upvotes? Like how is the algorithm working there? So we used to have it be like that where every uh, supported RSC would be tied to an upvote. 
Mm-hmm. Um, when we did that, essentially, I think our community was, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, of lower quality than it currently is. Like we had a lot like, like you know, academically trained scientists. And a lot of the papers that were being supported were like not compelling. And so, yeah, it was it was a negative thing when it came to like the quality of the content on the homepage. I think it could work if the majority of the people who were supporting papers were scientists, because um, then it's it's saying something kind of different and interesting. But yeah, right now it's just purely like uh, showing appreciation, and it doesn't uh, factor into the like hot score algorithm. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And and one more question. Um, sorry, I'm taking time. But um, so like, is it like that? Like any person who is on research up can do like certain number of upwards for a paper or is it like person can just like randomly click like 20 times and give 20 upwards? It, it's a one upvote per person per paper. And oh, we're even thinking about potentially limiting a person's up, upvotes per, per day, like saying you have five upvotes to give every day or something like that. Great, thank you. Yeah. Ricardo? Yeah, also briefly, uh, I wanted to second what Nathan said uh, about the, the comments. Also, like comments are uh, way more useful when you want to uh, bring in people on Research Hub because we have discussion and people are going to join Research Hub because their paper is going to be uh, discussed. We can do much with uh, upvotes and downvotes. Maybe upvotes and downvotes can be used uh, later, as you said, in the peer review system or maybe like reproducibility score if we'll ever get there where you can actually say that you reproduced the paper and didn't work. And in that case, a downvote will basically mean that the paper, it, you know, that what has been uh, explained in the paper doesn't really work in reality because you tested it out. I mean, difficult to implement, but that can actually be uh, something useful to do with the downvotes. Uh, but yeah, as for now, I think, you know, comments are definitely more uh, important. Yeah, just as an FYI, um, in the new hot score, comments uh, have quite a bit of weight, significantly more weight than um, regular upvotes, just as an FYI. Is there is there a way to kind of like uh, give a score to the length of our conversation? Like my comment was commented by another one and, and, and so on, and like the thread was like 10, 20 comments long, because that also shows how much interaction there was under a post, instead of like uh, single comments. Do you mean Ricardo in the hot score, like uh, taking yeah, into account? Yeah, so some, somewhere in how to factor that in. Uh, yeah, it's already it's factored in. Actually, it's like uh, something like the number, it's like a logarithm of like the number of comments times the upvotes of uh, all the positive upvotes of comments on, uh, on the comments, something like that. Uh, but it is taken into account for sure. Okay, okay. So is there a way to, so there is actually a way to discriminate if five people commented like separately or if five people like kind of like interacted within the same comment, kind of like sharing their perspective? Uh, you mean like uh, taking into account the hot score or like show it somewhere? Like yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Like in, in, the, in the Oscar, like to show how paper is. Uh, that would just be the comments of second and third layer, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe I gotta think about that a little bit, but yeah. Cool. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for staying a little over time. We will talk about the editor editorialized titles and REC transfer ways next time when we have more time. Thank you all for staying. Thank you all for coming. And I'll see you next week. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Thanks, guys.